Hey, what's going on YouTube? Marine X back at it again. This is the Mac Fox X2 electric e-bike. This is another recommendation when it comes to a possible bug out vehicle. I've talked about a, one of its competitors and this is a significantly better bike in almost every way than that first review that I did. If you're here for the bottom line up front, would I buy the Mac Fox X2 e-bike with my own money for bug out situations, especially if it was just me and a spouse or a partner? Yes, I would. All right, so if you need to go on ahead and make the purchase, links down below. If you wanna know what I think about it, my riding experience and things I do and don't like about it, stick around. So the, the Mac Fox X2, the, uh, as you can see, there's some things about it that I'm already liking. I mean, like it's, it's light enough to be held up with the largest hero clip, which can hold up to 100 pounds. And this thing makes the weight with that. This thing is 65 pounds, so I could store this with a hero clip. I can store this on a wall. And so I'm gonna read off them just so I'm, I'm accurate about this. Before I jump into that, Mac Fox sent this to me for the purposes of making another bug out idea type of video. No money exchange hands, they're not paying me anything. I get to keep the bike. Um, but they don't get to see the video before you guys. Matter of fact, they're seeing it at the same time that you guys see it for the sake of being accurate about their specs. I'm gonna read off the website and then we'll talk about some things that I really like and don't like about it and talk about the riding experience. So this thing goes up to 28 miles an hour. Even with me being pleasantly plump, I weigh 230 pounds. This thing get, got up to the max power, 45 to 90 miles. Now the 45 to 90 mile range, what that really means is if you pedal, you can go up to 90 pounds depending on how much you weigh, what pedal assist mode you keep this thing in. I'll talk about the range that I got when I tested this thing out. It takes five to six hours to charge. That's because of the charges that they, they give you specifically with this thing. This is a 750 watt motor. It's a 48 volt, 20 amp hour um, battery, 750 watt hub motor here in the back. So it does, you know, gives a lot of power, has a twist throttle. It does have a, Sh a, Sh a Shimano seven gear shifter, similar to the other bike that I reviewed. It's actually the exact same shifter, but it's in a better place. Has a, a rider weight limit of 330 pounds, 665 pound actual e-bike itself. It has a thousand peak out of that motor, meaning that if it needs to give you more power, it won't sustain a thousand watt hours, but it will give you that. And I like this display because it tells you that. We'll talk about more about that here in a second. And also the seat length is 33 inches. The reason I wanted this bike sent out to me is because the last video I did, that was specifically designed for one human. This one might be good for a couple, especially if you're in an apartment and you wanna do some bug out situations or something like that. It has an LCD screen on it. It has a front and rear suspension, hydraulic brakes, so I like the fact this has a rear suspension unlike the other one that I checked out. And this really is designed for riders between 5'3 and 6'6. Six, 5'3, six. that does make sense. My daughter is 5'2. She was able to get her toe. The, the main thing is you want to be able to get your tippy toes on the ground to hold the bike up when you're sitting still. She was able to do that. So 5'3 does seem to make sense. I'm 6'2 and I'll put this thing down to kind of show you what it looks like. Those are the basic specs of it. Now, Another thing about this is this is $1,699, $1,700 bucks, let's call it what it is. You can get $100 off normally by like using specific links. I, I, I'll check, check the links down below to see what the most up-to-date pricing is on this. This costs about the same amount as the other bike that I took a look at, has more features and it weighs less. So these bikes, you know, they're, they, it has this, this has a younger brother called the Mac Fox M1, X1 rather, which I wouldn't recommend because the motor is not as strong and it's probably not as capable off-road as that bike. Let's see if I can just take this down. All right, let's take this down. So I'll show you what I look like sitting on the bike. It's a pretty comfortable bike overall. It's actually a very comfortable seat. Fit on here pretty easily. You know, you can even see me being 6'2". It's pretty easy to pedal with. Not very bad at all. But this is one thing I liked about this. 
Let's talk about why you want maybe this specific bike in a bug out situation. Two humans can sit on this bike. Easily, I could sit all the way back, put someone that's smaller. Like if you have a, if, let's say you're a single mom, you want to use this in a bug out situation. You can put a kiddo here, keep them in front of you, be ready to rock and roll. Or you got a spouse that wants to sit, get behind you and ride bitch. They can get behind you, hold on put their feet up. I think you can get some pegs for this. It'd be a more comfortable ride if they got somewhere to put their feet, put, put their feet on some pegs or something like that. That will make this a lot better. It has like this always on light that you can turn off if you want to, but that's going to keep you illuminated even when it's not um, dark outside. You always have a way for other people to see you. So if it's a bug out for a weather emergency, you're always going to be able to be seen. You can put the brights on and make that light brighter if you want to. This thing has actual turn signals so you can turn on turn signals and people around you can see where you intend to go how you intend to go and all of that good stuff it also has a brake light and the brake light works when you actually push when you push the brake unlike some of its competitors that's a pretty good feature for this thing to be so small once this thing gets up to 28 miles an hour it throttles back the power meaning it means 28 miles an hour without giving you a hundred percent not it doesn't give you 750 watts of power when you're at the max speed that's a really good thing because what that means is you can sustain the battery longer if it's not giving you the full wattage the entire time one thing i would say though is at max speed even if you're in seventh gear you are ghost pedaling on this you can't really pedal at 28 miles an hour at that point it's the the bike is doing all the work but if you want to cruise comfortably at like 22 miles an hour and pedal, you can definitely take this out for an extended range. So for my range test, zero pedaling. I did zero pedaling all together and I was able to get 38 miles out of this on a full battery, 230 pounds, no pedaling whatsoever. So 45 to 90 miles, maybe I, put, I, I could have got it on a warmer day. It's been pretty cold here in the Dallas Metroplex. And I did that ride when it was like 21 degrees outside. So, and I also had a lot of gear. I had a, uh, a bug out load out on my back, kind of would simulate what you might have. Then there's storage here at the bottom. If you want to have an additional battery, you can buy from their website. You can get the battery when you order this bike, which means you can do a battery swap and go even further distance. So this has the way for you to adjust the compression. Uh, of the actual bike itself if you want the shocks to be less to set the amount of of compression of the front shock is pretty good the rear shock feels real good and then it has a grab handle here at the very back so if someone is behind you on some skates or something crazy like that or if you need to tie this to pull something out you can use that for that type of scenario let's cut to my riding experience talk about different situations where you might want to use this and then we'll come back and talk about the pros and cons of this all right so let's get a little bit of a riding experience with this thing and uh feels pretty good i just kind of wanted to get the opportunity to kind of get up and going and see where we're going in regards to this thing this is a uh, the seat for this one is incredibly comfortable i've tested out several of these sort of um e-bikes in regards to possibly using them for a bug out situation and if you had to use this one for a bug out situation you're going to be using it in a, a longer type of distance and you're going to be riding it for a while this is probably the most comfortable seat that i've tested out so far and i've been on quite a few of these bad boys and this is just literally just feeling how it goes i love that the actual display gives you different options of what you want to display out so i normally keep mine on miles per hour and I normally will also keep this thing on watt hours that it's pumping out. So I know how much or how much wattage is being sent to the motor, sent to the wheel. And it kind of gives me the, the full kind of concept of exactly, of course, it's a 750 watt uh, motor, but it can send more power to the wheel if needed. Like right now, I'm booking it at 22 miles an hour. I'm sending 1050 to the wheel. So nice and nice powerful motor to even be a smaller bike i'm a big fan of that type of stuff it still has the fatter tires it's the 20 inch tires they're still four inches you can do some off-roading with this it does have the shocks included fantastic brakes and all that stuff that i mentioned earlier 
but this is not that this would be my first go-to bike for going off-road so if your bug out location is more of an off-road location if it's if it's more grassy than anything else then maybe you can consider this for a bug out type of thing but when it comes to actually the rugged trail riding i don't even know if i'm going to do a trail test with this i might give that guy give that to you guys kind of like i did with that hay bike you know, because for me particularly, my bug out location is located on a, in a wooded area and my truck can handle that. So, you know, I wouldn't be taking an e-bike to my bug out location because I'm not leaving my entire family for the wolves. But if you're going to be soloing it out, maybe leaving, going from like an apartment complex, going out to trying to get out to the suburbs or get out to like the country type of area, that might be something for you. Let's see if we can little bit of slippage in those leaves obviously still feels pretty good though got up that incline out obviously i was already going like six miles an hour when i hit that incline but let's just see what this thing will max me out at i'm working with a full battery so no pedaling whatsoever let's just see it's sending about 10 50 watt hours to the motor right now and it has me at we're at 23 24 i think this is a class c e-bike so it should go to 28 29 miles an hour but you should technically have to pedal to get to that amount I, i'm not gonna lie to you most of my e-bikes i don't do a lot of pedaling i will say this let me throw this into the highest gear can this handle uh let's see when i get to top speed let's just see how this thing handles me actually pedaling okay so at this point i'm ghosting so if you're going to want to pedal this is not really the bike for you i'm at 29 miles an hour let's just see what i can get it to on a nice or that was 25 miles an hour let's just see what i can get this thing to on a nice flat run and see what it goes to all together but sometimes in these bug out situations you're really trying to get out of dodge quickly and for a long time so we'll do a range test on this thing and i'll give you those numbers Let's just do this, no pedaling. See what this thing will top me out at. So I'll, this would be a great option. If you're single, you live in an apartment or something like that, well, I got a stop sign, I got to stop. I would love to see. So even from that turn to this stop sign, I was able to crank it to, to 26 miles an hour. So this thing seems like it has plenty of power for you, just you know, re regardless of what you're gonna be trying to use it for now this doesn't really have the option for putting a tray or anything like that like a rack on the very back of this so if you're really using this for bugging out and for me if you're using an e-bike or a bike in general for bugging out it's a really certain ways that you should do it the stuff that's on your person are like deadly important so things that are in your pockets things that are on your back those are the things that cannot grow legs or you're willing to fight for okay Things that are going to be attached to a bike. Those are things that if you lose them, that would suck. But you're not 100 percent. You're not going to be 100 percent upset if those things were to walk away. So maybe you keep tarps or you keep extra food storages or whatever. Maybe those are attached to the bike. So if those were to grow legs, yeah, you'll be mad or whatever. But it's not it's not anything that you're going to be 100 percent like you know very upset about and then obviously at your bug out location itself it's kind of what you would even include to be a tertiary or on your way to your bug out location you may have tertiary supplies that obviously if it's a if it's on your way and it's not even on your person you absolutely can't care about those things too much but if you're bugging out and if you say you're trying to bug out because of a weather related situation that's the type of stuff the stuff you're going to be putting in your bag it's going to be things such as your passports birth certificates important pictures and documents things that you can't lose things that you need to be able to identify yourself with or to be able to just know for a fact that everything is good to go and all of that good stuff so that's something to think about is it's very nimble i do like that i like the fact that um this thing kind of just gets in and out much better turning radius than some of the other bikes that I've that I've tested out. Nice turning, decent turning radius. You could tell here because of the shocks, it doesn't fully turn as much as it could. 
but still decent. All right, so there's an auto off feature on the bike. Um, it's, a, it's okay. I will say this, the bike basically, the cache of memory for like remembering the last things that you had the bike set for are not very high. So I just went inside my post office. I had to go in there and break, out, break down some boxes and grab some stuff, throw it in my pack. So that probably took me five, six minutes. And in that time frame, the, the bike turned itself off, which is good to go. We don't waste any power, but the screen forgot everything that I was doing. So, you know, I wanted to, I had the screen set up to show me watt hours. It wasn't, it didn't show me that anymore. And uh, so it does kind of suck to, that it forgets exactly how you have it set up. If you have it set up a certain way, you may want to keep it that way or whatever. But this thing has a lot of freaking zip. When you make it go straight ahead, oh, this thing goes, it moves, freaking moves. I just hit from there to here, 26 miles an hour. Not bad at all. Let's see if we can, now I got to worry about these bumps these speed bumps on the road otherwise i would probably try to crush it out right now but of course i got to deal with these man and dealing with these things going 26 miles an hour sucks but let's just see if we go to speed bump to speed bump how fast can i get this thing going so even from there yep so it looks like yeah it's about 28 miles an hour is what this thing is pumping out no pedaling whatsoever at this point it is all ghosting so it's almost pointless to pedal once this thing is in full speed you can't comfortably go one-handed on this bike something good to know as well so if you're wondering about that this is just a fun little bike to ride it has turn signals which i think is freaking awesome as well it has a bright mode as well so you can go have the headlight go from kind of like a there's a always on like a a daylight running light that's always on no matter what it's a halo ring and then there's actual headlights that are turned on themselves by pushing a button and then one more layer on top of that is you can turn brights on if you need brights on and how effective is it i don't i wouldn't say it's the most effective thing ever uh i did use it on a night ride the other day but you know it's nice to have it versus not having it one thing I will say is once you hit that top speed and you pump this thing out to 28 miles an hour, the, the motor stops giving you power. So this thing could give you more. Maybe I can go into settings and figure out how to make it give me more power. I don't know how to do all that type of stuff. I guess I can read the instruction manual. But I guess the point is, is that once it hits that 28 miles an hour, it stops giving you power, which is a good thing because this thing does not have a cruise control. But once you get that top speed, you want to maintain that speed. You don't want the motor just 100% giving you full power the entire time. It does th basically throttle itself back. Thr the motor throttles itself back. So you can maintain 28 miles an hour without, without giving yourself full wattage. Let's just see how it handles this hill. All right, so we got this hill here. And the hill itself is probably like a nice 15 inch incline. So a 15 inch incline or 15 degree incline or whatnot, no pedaling whatsoever. We'll see if this thing can handle it easily overall. And yeah, it's not bad whatsoever. It's able to get me up that incline pretty easily. No assisted pedaling to get started. I could appreciate some stuff like that. That, you know, that's gonna have to do with this motor, man. It's like, the 750 watt motor, if that was a dirt heel or if I would have started at the most like the highest part of that incline, it might be a different story. Hey, let's let's start off with some cons about this before I jump into the pros, because I, I'm feeling this bike quite a bit. So some cons, it's pricey, $1,700. That's a pricey boy. I guess for me, I, I have two other comparisons when it comes to e-bikes. And one of those was $1,600, same 750 watt motor. It does have a stronger four amp hour. I think it had a four amp hour charger, so it can charge it a little bit faster than the other competitor I, I uh, compared this to. This has 20 by 20 inch by four inch tires, 
which is fine. But when I did do this in off-road mode, it the 26 inch tires of the other bikes that I've tried out are just, they seem to be way more forgiving, a lot comfortable, a lot easier when it comes to the grip. But you know, this is just me kind of comparing and contrasting the two. This seat is extremely long, but you're not gonna be able to swap this out with like a, an aftermarket seat. So if you have those normal triangle sh shaped seats and if you wanna change this out, you're not gonna be able to do that. This seat is comfortable, but if you didn't like the way this was, you're gonna have to find something that's about the same size. This battery sh shakes and rattles. Like it's completely secured on here. I've already checked it two or three times, but it definitely shakes and rattles when you're rocking and rolling down the road. Also, even though I did tighten this, this um, light up pretty good, you have to make sure you tighten this up really good. Otherwise, this will move on you. The turn signals don't turn off on their own. So this is not a car. When you make the left turn or you make the right turn, you have to turn the turn signal off. Otherwise, it's just gonna stay on and it can slowly uh, stab away at your battery a little bit. The LCD screen is laughable for $1,700. I have an e-bike that costs less than this and has a full colored LCD screen. I think they're starting to put some of these bikes on the market with OLED, which you don't need that. Finally, there's no app, at least not an app that I saw. So I don't know if this thing's gonna get firmware updates. It's weird that your e-bike needs firmware updates, but the other ones that I've tested have apps. So if they need to push some type of firmware, either even for safety reasons, like if they need to, if, if e class three bikes are forced to be changed a certain way or whatever. Let's talk about pros. These handlebars are so freaking comfortable. I usually will wear, uh, will ride this while wearing gloves, but even without gloves, it's these some super comfortable handlebars. You're not gonna wanna change these out with anything aftermarket. The twist throttle is so much better than a thumb throttle. I'm glad it's located on the right side. Most people are right-handed. I'm assuming you probably could switch this around and work left-handed, but I'm not interested in doing anything like that. I like the always on like daytime running light of this front light up here. I like the, has like that halo effect. You can turn on the brights. I'm a big fan of the turn signals, but the riding experience is what I like the most. The front and rear shocks makes you feel comfortable taking a speed bump at 20 miles an hour. It makes you feel comfortable hitting the trails with this. And it is just a very, this is a bike where if you don't feel like pedaling, if you want to get this thing, your bug out situation, let's say that you live in the Outer Banks, North Carolina, let's say you're in Key West, Florida, let's say you're in Mackinac Island in Michigan, let's just say you're in one of the islands off the coast of New York, there's a possibility where you have to bug out of your location because of weather and the bridge is completely flooded with cars. This is going to be a comfortable riding experience to get you that 10 to 30 miles off of the Barry Islands to the mainland. Very comfortable type of ride. Let's just say you live in a city, you're single, maybe it's just you and your spouse, and y'all want to bug out from downtown Metroplex, from uptown to the suburbs or to the beginning of like the lowland or highland, a 20, 30 mile trek, a super comfortable ride to do something like that. And... It is just overall a really, really good looking bike. I'm a big fan of just, I thought it was gonna kind of look weird, me being 6'2 and just being on this thing, but it's so sharp. You can get it with the fenders. You can get it with the optional bag and accessories and all that other type of stuff. And if you're gonna be taking this off road, you wanna get the fenders because you don't want all that water and dirt thrown on you. But if you kind of like the way this thing looks naked, I kind of like the way this thing is just rocking out like this overall i'm a big fan of it the turning radius is pretty good i've compared some other bikes but you can fully almost get this thing to customer service of mac fox is pretty good now obviously i got this bike for free but when i told him the kickstand was broken i didn't talk to the same rep i actually reached out to customer service as if i was a customer showed him a picture of the kickstand they sent me one out the next day asked no questions they just assumed that it was broken during shipping and made life pretty, pretty easy. This thing is designed in the USA. I'm assuming it's made in, um, made in China, but it just feels like a very capable bike for a bug out situation. So if you wanna keep like the battery in like an EMP, EMP proof type of shield or scenario, this is a doable solution for you. Keep that stored 
in it if you need to bug out you have something to rock and roll with and there are some things it doesn't have obviously you are missing the extra rack that would normally kind of go in the back that you would keep your butt your bag at but you know for something like this this might be something where you buy saddle bags or you just keep your bug out bag located on your actual person and you can also it does have the four screws in the front so if you want to add a basket to the front you know then you can do that as well so it's really up to you comment down below do you prepare for bug out situations whether they be for civil unrest for weather related for whatever do you are you making those type of preparations i am for my entire family is this something that you could see yourself getting overall even if you just want to use it for an around the way type of solution you can these are becoming increasingly more and more popular so you can even use this for commuting it and doesn't have to just strictly be for bug out and at the end of the day this is a bike so even if the motors are not working you can still use it as a bike could I recommend its little brother, the X1, at $999? That price is just so good at $999, especially if they offer discounts. Like, it's only a 500-watt motor, but at $999, like, it's, it's, it basically is built just like this, minus the shocks, and it's a smaller motor. That's almost an easy one to recommend as well. I don't have that one. But I know that if, especially if it's just you by yourself and you don't need the shocks and you don't need the 28 miles an hour because it's not going to get you that. And obviously, but I could see that working, especially if you get two batteries. So the X1, the X2, I can recommend either one of the two from the different solutions that I've had. Comment down below. Are you interested in something like this? Do you like seeing these videos? If you don't, <laughs> pound sand. I just post whatever I want on my channel. If this is your first time stopping by, hit the subscribe button. I would love to have you a part of the battalion. If this is not your first time stopping by, well, thank you once again for watching me run my grape. For everyone else, we'll speak soon.